Hello, this is Martin from EBES in Austria, and you are watching a video clip from our series of videos about ABS geometry control software. In this clip, we are going to look at casting base segments and at different options of defining the bulkhead on both sides of a base segment. As a reminder, a base segment is a segment that's cast against two bulkheads. Uh, it typically serves as a starter segment for a casting sequence in the casting yard. We are going to use the example shown here on the screen for this particular video clip. There are two cantilever cantilevers, a base segment here in the middle on this side and also here in the middle on the other side. We'll be casting both these base segments and we're playing through some of the options available along the way. Um, let's start with cantilever one. It has been selected here and we're about to cast the peer segment. Click next and we get this first input screen where we really only decide on which side of the segment we want to place the primary bulkhead of our casting machine. Um, the software suggests that we place the primary bulkhead at the side with station 97.5 and I have no problems with that except Clicking on next again gets us to the setting out stage uh, for this uh, base segment. And this is what it looks like by default. Uh, we see the three control points on the bulkhead side here and the other three control points on the opposite side. Um, Obviously, the segment is five meters long and those control points are set at 100 millimeter distances from the edge edges of the segment. What we also see is that we have a crossfall in this segment. Um, we can, of course, turn the segment to a horizontal uh, position by defining control points A and C as the horizontal and B as the zero level and that turns our Z coordinates to zero. I would like to point to the joint bulkhead or secondary bulkhead here. The program suggests primitive, which, which is one way of defining, which is the default way of defining the uh, opposite bulkhead for this segment. Let's use that for a moment and click accept. As we click next again, we get to the input for our survey of the control points. Quite clearly, we are using uh, still the same local coordinate system that sits on the top of the bulkhead at the origin, and these are the expected coordinates for the six control points, just like we set them out, of course. And coming back to the opposite bulkhead, we see the expected values for our call the measurements of the other side of the joint side where the secondary bulkhead in our casting machine sits and this input is somewhat awkward basically the program expects us to input the data for a coordinate system that sits on the other side on the secondary bulkhead side of our base segment pointing back to us, and it wants us to input the place of the origin 
and the orientation of the three axes of this coordinate system. Needless to say, this data is very difficult to obtain and in most cases people just assume that it's been cast perfectly, which is probably fair enough if you're using a fixed casting machine. But this hardly ever gets measured and is very difficult to measure in any case. But let's assume that we cannot automatically postulate that we have cast our base segment in a perfect way and let's use alternative methods of, defi of defining and measuring the secondary bulkhead also available in this software. Let's cancel this input and let's go to the casting yard view. In this casting yard, I've already prepared a very simple setup, a casting cell, which we can see here in blue. And I have also prepared uh, an element called a secondary bulkhead, a simple secondary bulkhead, whereby uh, I have defined the bulkhead and I've placed three control points on top of this secondary bulkhead. Please note that this is measured from the X, Y, and Z are measured from the origin of our secondary bulkhead. Um, the three points are all at an X coordinate of zero, which means on the bulkhead, one point is off to one side and this point is off to the other side, whereas BHM is right at the center of our secondary bulkhead. Please also note that points A and B are at the level of the secondary bulkhead, but point M is elevated by 300 millimeters. That may or may not be practical, but for the program to define the, the, the plane of our secondary bulkhead, we need three points or a number of points that define a plane. If they're all in one line, then there is no plane. Sometimes that's the only information we have, three points along one line, and then we can force our system into the vertical. So if the three points are all in one line, we can still use the glob Z option, which would lead the program to assume that we are perfectly vertical. For now, let's just use these three points as I've defined them here. And if we go back into our setting out dialog, we can switch from the primitive secondary bulkhead to our simple secondary bulkhead that we've just seen before. As we can see, our three control points here and here have turned. They are not level like we defined them. And this is a consequence of our rotation that we've defined earlier up here. Imagine the secondary bulkhead as glued to the back of our segment. And as the segment is then turned by these options here, the secondary bulkhead gets turned as well. And this is what we see here by this minus seven mil millimeters and plus seven millimeters. Of course, we can correct that by clicking on alignment and using the same rotation definition as before, A and C, and the translation. We will not use a translation here because zero is zero. And immediately we can see that the program has now turned our secondary bulkhead back. And A and B are level with our segment here. Let's accept that. Well, let's click on next and have a look how the uh, measurement data that we're supposed to input has changed. 
we are using our simple secondary bulkhead and the program is no longer asking us for measurement data for our coordinate system with orientations and locations of the origin, but instead the program is asking us for survey data for our three control points sitting on top of the secondary bulkhead. And of course the program is also asking us for the control points that we have put into our new base segment. This is still measured in local coordinates with a, an assumption that our local coordinate system sits on top of our primary bulkhead looking into our segment and our secondary bulkhead has these presumed or expected coordinates in that system. Of course, rather than using our local system, we could use the coordinates from our casting yard, and that's one more modification that I would like to do in the previous input uh, screen. So I'm cancelling this one one last time, and I'm going back to the setting out stage. And this time I'm not using local coordinates, but instead I will choose cell one. Everything else will stay the same. And we can see that because cell one has a location in our certain location in our casting yard, uh, coordinate system, our coordinates have now switched from local coordinates to casting yard coordinates. Except, as a reminder, here is our casting yard, here is the origin, here in blue is a, a simplified outline to show where our uh, cell is sitting and I realize it should probably be five meters long and I think nine meters on both sides. And now the blue outline corresponds with our segment. We have our bulkhead here and we have the secondary bulkhead over here and we see the control points and we also see the control points here in our segment. As we continue, we have a chance to resurvey our uh, casting cell. And as we come in here, we can see that expected coordinates now reflect our casting yard system because we are using a specific casting cell for the purpose. And let's assume that we have indeed cast our base segment perfectly. I'm using the shortcut set ideal down here. No errors. And we accept this. And we've just cast our first base segment as shown here in green. Green is always the uh, as cast state. And the program has already started to set out the match cast segment on each side. Rather than um, casting the whole sequence for the two uh, cantilevers here, I would like to switch and cast the second base segment in this example. And in casting this second base segment, I would like to demonstrate yet another option how to set it up. In this case of this base segment here, I would like to use the existing base segment as my secondary bulkhead, a case that's quite often practiced in casting yards. So for this purpose, I'm switching back to the casting yard view and I will introduce yet another secondary bulkhead element. I will call it um, 
secondary segment. And I will use the segment button here to select an existing segment, the only one that we have, as our secondary bulkhead. Now, let's keep in mind that uh, we want that secondary bulkhead with a horizontal top, so we can then use the translation rotation function that I've shown before. So here we need to rotate this segment, which comes at a certain crossfall angle, back to horizontal. And I'm using the usual functions, defining my horizontal line by control point A and C, and my top of the segment by control point B. And lo and behold, we have created a secondary bulkhead element using the existing peer segment and the program has used the control points on that existing peer segments as our bulkhead control points, so to say. And again, we see those operations with uh, rotating and translating the, the segment into the right position has resulted in our bulkhead being perfectly horizontal. Now that we have this secondary bulkhead element, let's make, make use of it and let's set out our second base segment. Again, we need to define what, where our primary bulkhead sits and where our secondary bulkhead sits. I'm going with a default, which states that the primary bulkhead is at the joint, which corresponds to station 197.5. I accept that. By clicking on Next, we come to the uh, Setting Out dialog. Again, we can we are setting out cantilever 2. I've selected it previously. We are setting out the peer segment. And we are not going with the primitive setting out, but we are going to use a secondary bulkhead. And in this case, we are using the segment that we've just used for the purpose. As we can see, with an alignment defined here, as before, and in this case we also use the translation, we are casting in cell number one. We are rotating our new segment to a horizontal position flush with the, uh, with the bulkhead top. We are using our segment, our secondary segment, and we are turning it back like we did before. And here is our setting out data. Again, perfectly horizontal um, surface, except in this case, our secondary bulkhead control points are the control points of the existing segment. If we accept that and go to the next input screen, we have a chance to correct our mold. And again, if we look at our sitting out in a casting yard now, we can see that this is our new segment in our casting cell. And these are now our control points for secondary bulkhead. We get, we accept that. And if we go to our Cast info preview. <clears throat> we get the setting out data for our segment, including the setting out data for our so called joint bulkhead, or in other words, our segment that we use for the purpose. And once we've surveyed our uh, segments after casting, we can here input our survey data for our base segment and our secondary bulkhead or the, or the other base segment which we are using as a secondary bulkhead. 
Again, I'm just setting it to ideal, accept, and in our global view, we see that both base segments have been cast. One against the secondary bulkhead made of steel, for example, and this one here against our first segment.